This is the Fantasy Football Unlimited Podcast with your host, Kevin Murray. It is indeed a great day to be great on the Fantasy Football Unlimited podcast because we have an incredible guest on this episode from Matthew Berry's Fantasy Life. It's the one and only Ian Harditz. I'm thrilled to have you on here, my man. Took my intro, brother, but yeah, no, it is, uh, it's is—it's great to be meeting with you. you know, I've been playing this out for a while, and yeah, man, always uh, down to talk some fantasy goodness in the middle of July with a uh, fellow diehard. So one last time, it's a great day to be great, and uh, yeah, man. That's awesome. And it is a, it's been a great year to be great for you. You've you know, obviously fantasy life is, is booming. You got married. Uh congrats on everything, Ian. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, making some moves, man. No longer uh living just uh you know, solo bachelor life the same way I tweeted a picture of my dogs uh, the other day and someone was commenting on that. So we've we've come a long way, man, trying to be a <laughs> healthier person, been uh, you know, more of a gym rat than I have in uh past years. So just trying to, you know, make a make each day a successful one. I love it. I love it. Now let's let's not bury the lead though. On this podcast, Mauricio Gutierrez from NFL Fantasy and NFL and Espanol, oh, yeah. he came on here earlier this spring and, and and he had a message for you specifically. He said your fantasy team sucks. Uh, I, I just want to say Ian Hart is something. <laughs> this is a message for Ian Hart. <laughs> oh, your fantasy team sucks. There it is. <laughs> oh, that's great. Is there is there anything you'd like to say to respond to that? I mean, if you guys are watching on video, you can see those uh, two belts over my left shoulder. And one of those came, uh, you know, in a matchup where Mauricio had a chance to win one for himself. So you can uh, go ahead and interpret that uh, any way you want. But no, I love Mauricio. We've been in uh, leagues, plenty of leagues over the years. He got the best of me, I believe, in our uh, international dynasty uh, squad. It is amazing, man. I, I will say, you know, obviously – majority of uh, interactions you know in the fantasy field are going to be in america but i've had you know podcasts in australia and uh england and uh stuff like that obviously mauricio you know hailing uh from more down south but brazil is a big market as well like it is incredible to me like just how this game can really bring apart just completely different cultures that i never uh never really would have expected so very cool stuff but yeah mauricio man come on man you you know the king is I love it. It is true. You bring up a good point about the international you know, aspects of fantasy. And just look at Scott Fishbowl live drafts. I mean, you got them all over the world this year. So it's pretty cool to see. And, and you know, I would say that that people like you, you know, analysts that have, have really made a huge impact on this community have had a uh, you know piece of that 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 success that's, that's running around the world. I love it. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, it's a good reminder. I think I might be on the clock there in our uh, Scott Fishbowl room. But I got sniped. I can't believe I got sniped on uh, Cordero Patterson. That's the biggest one for me. You know, Greg Dorch, Rashid Shahid, guys I love. I get it. But really, couldn't let me have CPAT. Shame. Shame. That was definitely intentional, I'm sure. <laughs> now, for, uh, for listeners that are maybe unfamiliar with your work, uh, what is your role at Fantasy Life? I think I'm senior fantasy analyst or something like that. I don't know, man. I use, you know, I've had different roles all throughout the years. I think oftentimes it's just, you know, a big fancy name. I, I make podcasts, I write articles, and I just talk ball, man. That's what I'm trying to do every day out here. So content creator, I think Google calls me an internet personality. So hmm. for, for me, people that uh, consume fantasy football typically do it by reading articles, they do it by consuming podcasts, and they do it by uh, scouring social media. So I try to just, again, accomplish – all each of those three things, uh, you know, during any given day, and uh, if I can do that, I feel like I'm doing my job. I love it. Now, obviously, you got to have a passion for sports. Where did it all begin for you growing up? You know, who were your favorite teams, players uh, across the the entire sports landscape? Oh yeah, bro, I always loved football. It was my favorite one. Um, it was first sport I was like just really good at. You know, I played everything as a kid, but everything came a little bit harder than football. And I, I remember being six years old and just drawing up plays, you know, at my grandma's and stuff like that. I was devastated to find out that there were 11 guys on both sides, not 10, because that ruined uh, some of my early work there. But got that figured out over the years. And uh, yeah, man, I played uh, ball, you know, up until college. And, you know, I wasn't going pro or anything like that, but got hit in the head a few too many times. So decided to uh, call it quits after a freshman year, you know, in D3 land. And after that, I just had a bunch of uh, extra time on my hands pretty much and, you know, wanted to try to get into the media side of things because I had, you know, made a big time habit of 
reading all the articles, you know, books I could about the game. And I don't know, man, I got to a certain point where I just thought I could potentially do it. You know, my degree was in finance, so it wasn't like I was, you know, constantly writing or anything, but reached out to a bunch of different, you know, writers and analysts that were in fantasy and regular football. And lo and behold, Jonathan Bales was the only one that took me up on just, you know, basically supplying, you know, stats research for him to then uh, write about so uh jonathan at that point was just starting up fantasy labs and so i was able to kind of get in early with that grinded 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 for uh, a lot of years doing a lot of things that didn't even necessarily uh you know relate to fantasy football content at first but always just try to uh, no matter what my job responsibility was at the time, you know, I tried to just keep on pushing out the sort of content that would be, uh, you know, asked from someone in a full-time role. And eventually, you know, I've had a chance to do that. NBC Sports, PFF, and uh, recently Fancy Life, man. So just again, love, love, love football. Um, for me, the fancy part of it almost came about more uh, so as an employment opportunity. I, got, I played fantasy and it's great, but I know a lot of people, you know, get into fantasy because they're from gambling or they're just, you know, really into fantasy football specifically. And, you know, if I stop playing in a single fantasy league next year, I, I'm, I'd miss it and everything. But if I stop watching a football game, man, I don't know what the hell I would do in my life. So <laughs> in a you know, closer way to, uh, you know, just – immerse myself in the game I, I've always loved and uh you know from the beginning and honestly just as much as fantasy has given me a lot of those wavelengths I mean it's just think about it man it's just so much easier to get a job and try to make money in fantasy than real life because fantasy we have people investing their money in leagues and a lot of fantasy players are gamblers and you know it's a lot easier than sell subscriptions with that versus you know quote unquote real life football analysts so i would encourage anyone out there that you know wants to kind of get their foot in the door i mean you know even if we see on the twitter streets people say oh fantasy and bio and this and that you know always kind of got that negative connotation we had that idiot not helping us with the uh, caleb williams interview you know this year and stuff but i would just say man again it's um it's one of those things where i think a uh, smart work regardless of uh where you're doing it's going to stand out and you know personally i think fantasy sometimes gets a bad rap where if we called fantasy points you know impact points or something i think uh you know quote unquote real fantasy real football people would have a much easier time coming to grips with it because we all talk about the same production stuff at the end of the day it's just uh this weird little segment so long story short man just uh love football and uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk about it each and every day I love it. Yeah, you definitely are, are football first, which is really cool. Obviously, you know, for for consumers of content, it's it's nice to to have that as your you know to have it so clear that you, you you love the game, which is awesome. Back to just you know fandom. Is there an all time favorite player for you? Yeah, Roy Williams, Cowboys safety. All right, so I'm I'm a Columbus, Ohio guy. I live here now. Grew up here. I went to school in Chicago, but uh, you know, spent the majority of my life in uh, Columbus. So certainly Buckeyes. You know, I love my Indians, now the Guardians. You know, Cavs and all that. But I grew up in a Cowboys household. And look, I was born in '92, people. So I always have to explain this. Like, I have seen, I think, three or four playoff victories. I did not get any. <laughs> I have not seen a meaningful NFC championship before. You know, so like, I know a lot of people are Cowboys fans. Band, Band Wagner's from the Super Bowls. You know, that is not quite me. But just. Uh, uh, you know, growing up and just loving the Cowboys, I really started, you know, in kind of those early 2000s years. And, you know, I played linebacker myself. So just seeing the hits that Roy Williams would be laying yeah. out there, man. And, you know, responsible, you know, man for getting the horse collar tackle lame. So maybe those ones weren't that cool. But just, <laughs> uh, you know, some of those early 2000s games and, you know, into the 2010s, obviously everything before that, almost a different brand of football uh, being paid, being played. And just uh, that physical aspect of, man, the way that Roy would play and, you know, just taking on guys, you know, even 20 pounds bigger than him and not backing down at all. Uh, shout out Roy Williams. That's I love that. I mean, I can appreciate that. I'm a Seattle guy, so LOB, you know, yeah. huge, huge, huge part – you know, part of my fandom. Just Cam enjoy, Chancellor, enjoy bro. Game. I mean, all, bam, all those bam. guys, yeah. but Cam, yeah, bam. Cam especially. Yeah. Bam Bam set the tone for sure, for sure. So I, as a fan, like what's your what's your favorite moment as a sports fan? I go Buckeyes win the Natty over Oregon. They got one. The one over the U was amazing. Don't get me wrong, but I was still pretty young at that point. And, you know, when you, you reach that high and all of a sudden, and when you're kind of, you know, I don't know what was I at that point, maybe 10 years old, like you almost stink. And it's like, oh, this is what happens all the time. Like we're playing for national championships. This is sweet. And we win them. I wasn't afraid of Miami at all going into that game. So, you know, 12 years of, uh, you know, not quite getting it done after that, getting our doors, you know, broken off against Florida, the LSU Natty 
Cincinnati not going our way either. I mean, it was a long trek trying to get back there, and it's been a painful last uh, few years as well uh, with, sadly, that team up north uh, making life far more difficult than they have throughout the rest of my life. So I'll give it to the Buckeyes, uh, but, man, you know, if I could ever get that uh, Cowboys Super Bowl, that would be a uh, tough one to uh, put down. Someday, someday it'll come. There's, there's, there's just too much on the line. Like those Cowboys, yeah, I, I respect Cowboys fans because they've, uh, you know, they did experience, you know, that great run, you know, obviously 70s, 90s. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's been a long time since. It, there's so many times where there's hope. So someday it's going to happen. It's going yeah. to be a good one. A lot of celebrations for sure. So when it comes to fantasy, when did you discover the game? I want to say first year I played was probably like 07, 08. I remember I joined uh, my dad. It's still actually the longest league I've been in, probably you know over 15 years now, where I started off a league on ESPN. I remember LaDainian Tomlinson was our first ever draft pick, and we won in year one, and it was another one of these things where I was like, oh, okay, sweet. Won, you know, won the championship. I should be doing this every year, and it took another freaking like eight or nine years before I managed to go back there and get that W. So, uh, you know, growing up with that and then just, you know, going through it, man, it's been a lot of fun. I was only in that league for a while, and then college started. This is my other, like, I consider home league where yeah we're eight man, eight man league which i know is lame but whatever it's me and my uh you know seven uh, closest college buddies and i lost our freaking first year doing it and you know we've been going since i don't know 2014 or something at this point so actually no it would have been like 2011 so i lose the first year doing it haven't lost since but we do punishments obviously every year and the punishment for me that year was to wear a jets tim tebow jersey every <laughs> tuesday for a quarter and the worst part was whether it's because my school is full of a lot of nerds that don't care about football or whatever not a single person asked me in my class why i was not only rocking a Jets Tebow jersey, which in and of itself should be like, what are you wearing that for? But the fact I wore it every single Tuesday for like 10 straight weeks somehow didn't <laughs> alarm anyone at uh, the University of Chicago. So that part was, uh, you know, sad, but also, you know, teaches a lesson of, uh, you know, I like to say a lot of times with fantasy football, you know, we have the Ricky Bobby uh, strategy, you know, if you're at first, you're last. But you got that last place punishment, man. Uh, you know, you're, you're certainly feeling pretty good about second to last sometimes, too. Well, I, yeah, I mean, it's a diehard commission. I, I appreciate those last place punishments and, and respect those that, that follow through. And that is uh, that's a fun one. I like that a lot. Uh, so back in the day when you first kind of discovered the game, do you remember analysts that you that you you know that you followed early on? Yeah, man, I used to, again, I wasn't reading a ton of fantasy to start up. I, I remember grantland.com was like my favorite website ever. Uh, Bill Simmons was certainly someone that, you know, podcasting and his articles used to just be incredible as well. Um, I say those two segments really just kind of got me a heavy into things. Once I started going more into fantasy, uh, you know, Evan Silva was someone that I considered to be, you know, the top just at like the top number one guy in the game. And, you know, he very well still might be uh, that guy now. And he's been super helpful to me and a ton of other people uh, throughout my career. So love, love um, Evan. But yeah, man, just uh, I will say one thing that might make me a little bit unique. And, uh, you know, I kind of can credit Jonathan Bales for giving me this idea at one point. But I do think sometimes, you know, people almost – read and consume so much fantasy football content when they're a fantasy football creator themselves and you know like when i would do that it's all of a sudden you start to have a unique idea but then you just keep going back to what you heard from someone else so uh personally i really don't consume much if any fantasy football content on a day-to-day -day basis i'm just constantly asking myself questions writing articles preparing for podcasts watching film um and doing all that and trying to come to my own conclusions which i do believe uh helps me kind of stay you know a bit more unique and different you know in a world where it's easy to uh, in a world in the industry where it's really easy to uh just kind of do the same thing everyone else is doing so uh you know, still need to stay on top of everything because if you're not, then you're going to look like an idiot for not, uh, you know, covering exactly what we should be doing out there. But, you know, some of my best, uh, I think, applications um, and ideas I've had for fantasy football content have come from consuming uh, UFC, MMA content, and even some basketball uh, stuff over the year. Kurt Goldsberry is a fantastic basketball writer who's, uh, you know, really done a great stuff with charts and some of his graphics. Um, Bill Barnwell, more of a real football guy, but he's been uh, fantastic. Um, Chris Brown, smart football, oh, just just incredible uh, stuff right there. So, yeah, those are some of the guys, again, I've especially appreciated over the years. That's awesome. Now, when it comes to the game, the game of fantasy, is there anything that makes a, a league specifically fun for you? Like, what makes leagues 
fun and entertaining yeah. for you. Not having kickers in them is always a good start. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that, I think it's the camaraderie and it's just, cause again, like I would love to win millions and millions of dollars, man, but you know, I'm doing okay. I can, you know, I was able to afford the college football 25 and not worry about it too much. So, you know, how much more can you really ask to have in the bank account there? But uh, I think, you know, you, uh, we, we were talking a little before the show started and, you know, just having the, group me camaraderie you know with a group of guys and it keeps you together man i've realized that more and more as i've gotten a little bit older where you know back in the day talking shit in the fantasy football group me with the college buddies it's like, all right, you know i'm still seeing them every other day pretty much uh, when we're out there but now a lot of times you know the only chance we maybe have to get together because of weddings and kids and this and that going on is the actual fantasy football draft so i do think uh you know especially for a lot of people in their home in their home leagues it does represent you know one at least one time during a year you can get together and then the you know group me where you get to talk shit and you know go on and on about stuff uh, throughout the rest of the year so i do think it's the people in it and uh accordingly that's why again sometimes as much as uh you know i, I i'm in like 22 leagues a year that i need to actively manage and do waivers you know throughout and stuff like that and it gets overwhelming man when uh you know uh you're going through again you know late Wednesday night and trying to get through it with a bunch of, you know, just high stakes leagues, people you don't even know that you're going against. And, you know, I could be, I can tell you for a fact, you know, I'm in, if I was in five championships and, uh, you know, I had a chance to win hundreds of thousands of dollars. And one of them, you know, I still tend to care a little bit more about trying to take home that eight man championship over the buddies. So, uh, something about just, again, just, Tail old as time, you know, showing your uh, friends that you're better than them in a sport that is still, you know, heavily sad and randomness because what other way are we going to talk shit? That's true. I mean, I think that's the foundation of this game is just that fun experience, the way it keeps people connected. Uh, it's 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 a special, special game. I'm glad people are are falling more in love with it because I think it just it keeps connect keeps people connected, strengthens bonds, relationships. You know, lot, lots of a lot of great words to be said about fantasy football. So so what was there a moment that that you know, that struck you, that caused you to dive into the industry that you can think of, or, or what was it that inspired that? Yeah, I was going part-time uh, throughout college, and then I got out. I had a nice uh, consulting job with a company called Accenture, and I wasn't doing very well at it because we had these screen covers that were for, like, confidentiality reasons so people couldn't, you know, see what was going on if they were next to you. And I use that as an excuse to, like, write fantasy football articles all day when I should have been working on, you know, much, <laughs> much more important stuff. So I remember being, like, maybe nine months in. I had had opportunities to maybe get in full-time in the industry before that and i hadn't taken them and i remember getting like my year one review and like it wasn't great man i wasn't really <laughs> used to not uh not succeeding with a lot of stuff and so i decided to make a jump when um jonathan offered me you know a chance to kind of run their nfl platform and i think that was about the time mark cuban started investing in fantasy labs as well so it was always tough for me to rationalize to you know my parents and just even myself like because you know i was i was on a good path to if i did stick out the consulting stuff to make a lot of money one day and all that but i just never never piqued my interest man i tried ordering the wall street journal in college and tried to force myself to read it and we, we just stacked them up man it never happened i just went back into uh sports articles uh pretty much immediately so it was uh the point where i could be like hey mom and dad i know it's crazy that i'm taking this you know thirty thousand dollar pay cut to take this job with a 10 person company Mark Cuban invested it, so maybe it's you know gonna work out. So uh again, it was kind of going into the quote unquote real world for a year, realizing I just freaking hated it, and then uh betting on myself and making the full leap into it. So uh, you know, I, I do wonder sometimes it's like, is there something not that fantasy football isn't important, but you know, is there something else out there that uh maybe a bit more real life importance uh day to day i could be doing and uh, we're still working on that but yeah man uh I, I would say that was the point i was 21 or 22 where it's like all right i messed up the consulting thing or at least you know we weren't on a great path with that now i'm in the fantasy thing full time like i better knock this out of the park because if not you know don't want to say i burnt the bridge in the other place but you know certainly wasn't going the way i intended so well, I love that you followed your passions because it's obviously it, it's been a, an, an awesome ride. You had a great run at, at PFF. What do you learn most about that experience at PFF, and and who have been the biggest influences and mentors, you know, for you as you've developed your career in the fantasy industry? Yeah, man, PFF was great. I mean, that team, I I thought our team, you know, around twenty twenty one was a 
the best in the industry, man. Like me, Dre McFarland, Andrew Erickson, uh, Kevin Cole, and then, you know, having guys like Austin Gale and Eric Eager, you know, holding down the NFL stuff, Mike Rever, Mike Renner, Trevor Sycamore. I mean, just absolutely loaded. So, you know, many of those guys, you know, still doing fantastic things with their respective employers. And, you know, PFF always uh, treated me nice. So um, I've always respected, again, not that every PFF grade is freaking perfect. And sometimes people go out there and they do try to say, no, nah, this is the one tool the one stat you need you don't need anything else i'll push back on that a little bit but all pff at its core is trying to do is help quantify what we're seeing from watching the game which i think is you know the best you can ask from anybody uh when it comes to football content so always um appreciated them but just in terms of uh influences in the industry got got again uh you know jonathan bales getting me to start uh justin fan who actually uh does basketball over at underdog nba and you know, did the fancy labs nba back when i was doing news you know he was certainly someone where had to really man like you see the rotor world news guys that is a hard job in the industry man and uh you know it's always easier to work really freaking hard when you have your boss and you have other guys around you working that hard and you know with justin and jay and jj and that fancy labs uh, news team uh those are guys that helped me uh, start grinding so matthew friedman who i'm uh, blessed enough to be uh, working with again you know he's someone that helps show me that you can try to be you know a good and creative writer in the context of a uh, fantasy so always uh love that from friedman and yeah man uh dwayne mcfarland someone who again i got to podcast with for two hours today which i freaking love uh constantly uh you know pushing each other I like to think it's you know iron sharpens iron and just again trying to uh, surround yourself with uh talented people that are also you know dedicated to the same cause man leads to good things happening uh, and you and Dwayne, I mean, what a duo that is. And talk to me, talk to me about that experience at Fantasy Life. I mean, obviously, it, it's been kind of a dream team assembled, uh, you know, a team of, of of superheroes, right? Like, I mean, it's it's, it's a, an Avenger type crew. It's just no surprise that it's it's going the way it is. Talk to me about your experience so far with with Fantasy Life trying man but yeah just uh you know met matthew barry a couple years ago and uh was hoping that we get a chance to be able to work together and now here we are so just uh thrilled to again be able to be back uh podcasting with Dwayne each and every day but yeah man i feel like it definitely uh you know just in terms of the every day not trying to take ourselves too seriously it is fantasy freaking football after all okay you know we're not exactly rocket scientists out here even if that is you know the sort of analysis uh we're striving for but yeah man it's just uh you you know, I'm I'm getting a little bit of a break off the newsletter because we're firing up the podcast uh, every day here starting next week. But um, again, it's just having that uh, community and, you know, Sam Wallace, a uh, shout out, does a great job with our uh, Discord as well. But just having that community of people who, again, just want to talk some ball each and every day, man. So, you know, I don't ever say uh, people can talk about whatever the hell they want. They don't have to stick to football or anything like that. But I will say, I think when people get into trouble with other things is, you know, if you want to go ahead and say something about, politics or baseball or cooking and if it's not a thought out opinion if you are just kind of shooting from the hip you know be prepared to get some backlash with that man so i think uh you know again just having a place where personally man i just want to talk football and that's really all i want to do and um i couldn't think of a better company to be able to do that with i love it now from a, like a consumer perspective what are your favorite features and resources and content that comes from fantasy life i mean now you got your you got your fantasy life new uh, magazine which is pretty awesome what uh, what do you love the most about what's what's coming out of fantasy life very cool being able to go to the grocery store and seeing uh you know the fancy life mag up there with uh you know athlon and all the other stuff that you know we've got over the years so that stuff is great but we actually just launched um fancy life plus you know which is a premium tool but you know for our highest price package is still less than a chipotle burrito per month and i'm talking you know not non-double meat non-guac just a base uh you know steak burrito from chipotle so uh but yeah, man, just uh, Dwayne's utilization hub, I think, is uh, you know up there with any th any t single tool in the industry in terms of just being able to see uh, just the week to week snaps, routes, you know the. It's everything that we all kind of want to do when uh, diagnosing a depth chart and just trying to figure out the usage involved and just the ways presented and how clean it is. Absolutely fantastic, and. You know, we have deals with uh, PFF and some other uh, potential companies. I don't want to name any that we might have going down the road and get myself in trouble. But uh, again, just our ability to, I think, combine some of the stats and advanced data into digestible fantasy useful tools uh, is what really separates us. So our draft master rankings where you can literally go in and see our ranks. And then, oh, hey, I'm in an ESPN league with 
three wide receiver starting spots and, uh, you know, quarterback premium settings. Like you can set that and then get all of our rankers right there for you. Uh, the ADP tools, you know, being able to give again, one site after another, right next to each other to try to help figure out where the value is laying. We got everything for you. So what about you guys to check it out and look, all the content remains uh, free and everything like that too. So I just finished my uh, team preview series a couple of weeks ago. Dwayne and I are pounding out podcast forms of that. So yeah, man, always just uh, trying to provide some great content. And uh, I believe we're doing just that. I love it. Now, obviously, you've seen a lot of change over the years in the fantasy space. Uh, where, are things, where are things going? What's the future of fantasy football? Whew, future of fantasy football. I think it's only getting bigger, honestly, as uh, you know, just more as gambling gets bigger and daily fantasy and just more and more, I think, players. I mean, dude, it was like 2015 or 2016 and Tony Romo couldn't even hold that fantasy football conference. And now we have, you know, NFL hyping up DraftKings and FanDuel every other commercial. So it really has come an incredibly long way just even in the last 10 years. And I think once we continue to get going and more and more and more people are just playing fantasy, it's going to lose the, uh, I don't want to say bad vibe, but I think there's still a subset of NFL fans that hear fans are like, oh, okay, you nerds over here with your make-believe teams and all that. I mean, again, I think the heavy majority of fantasy fans are NFL fans, and I think a lot of NFL fans are also fantasy fans. So I think it's honestly just merging all that into one kind of enjoyable process where, you know, when you hear broadcasts right now and, you know, some of these shows where it'll be a Sunday morning preview and, like, the fantasy section is them – cutting to Matthew Barry or someone for like 45 seconds and then just going right back to quote unquote regular football talk. So I think the, uh, you know, people that are able to succeed most are the ones that are going to be able to talk about a matchup and be able, you know, be attuned enough with everything to figure out, all right, what is the most actionable? What's the most resonating? What's the most hot topic item here? Is it, is quarterback coming back from injury? Is it this handcuffed running back is being thrust into a featured role in fantasy that everyone's talking about? Or is it the spread moving four points because of bad weather or something like that? So again, real football analysis, fantasy and gambling. If we wanted to make one of those, you know, come together. What, 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 those charts with the circles I'm drawing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Again, yeah, yeah. I think there's a big overlap in the people that are able to hopefully be in the very center of that and know exactly you know what's going on in each of the three main facets. Uh, I think that's going to be where a lot of the success comes from. Makes sense. Venn diagram. Yes. That's going, right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, when it comes to your own fantasy analysis, how do you balance the use of analytics and your intuition You know, when it comes to player evaluations? Yeah, man. Uh, I think writing – as a, just a ton is a uh, best way to do that. You know, it forces you to organize your thoughts in a rational way. And I know in today's age, people don't read as much and you know, it's a lot easier. I, I see my Twitter, man. It's a lot easier to go just sit there and get impressions or go make a quick, you know, one minute TikTok uh, video and stuff like that. And I just think that when you do that, not that it can't work, but to me, I get my best tweets. I get my best video ideas from writing and trying to answer questions. And I think you get the best questions to ask from actually going out there and watching the game. So at the end of the day, I think people that are watching as much football as possible, trying to ask good questions about it, and then taking the time to actually write out what your findings are, that's going to lead you to the most success in everything else. So it's one of those things where, again, there are extra steps that don't necessarily, uh, you know, you wouldn't think about maybe having to do just to create some random uh minute long video or something like that. But, you know, um, a couple of days ago, I made a Brock Purdy, you know, video of him creating plays out of structure because I was aware that he has been doing this, but you also have people that just want to compare him to Jimmy fucking G, which obviously isn't, you know, a case at all if you've actually been watching him play. So it is, uh, again, to me, an analytic isn't worth a damn if it's not helping demonstrate what we are seeing with our eyes on the film. So I think there's a lot of people that do a good job of, uh, you know, trying to find that happy marriage between the two. But sometimes we have that kind of either or category where, you know, just film grinders and they're not looking for ways to quantify it or people that think that the film is just, you know, changing their uh, perspective on it. So, again, I don't think there's one like answer, like one easy item because if there was everyone would do it man the answer is to grind every single day if you can and if you do that for three or four years and maybe get a little bit lucky with people noticing your work i think uh, good things can happen too i love it was there was there ever a time where you doubted your your future in the fantasy industry 
Oh, sure. I mean, especially just in terms of being like an actual someone content. I mean, I, I worked hard enough and did things with social and NFL news and just behind the scenes, uh, you know, sort of jobs that anyone might have, you know, with uh, tech startups that I was pretty confident I could stick around in there. But in terms of getting upside for myself, yeah, man, I mean, I, you know, my Twitter started out. I probably started seriously tweeting about like football in maybe 2016, something around there. And, you know, hundred followers at that point, no, you know, not much going on there. And, you know, you do the articles and, you know, no one's really reading them all that much. And you can see the page views on the other side. And if you're doing a startup or you're not writing for a big site, I mean, it can be uh, discouraging sometimes. So um, I would just say trying to control the controllables and just really focusing on, just being the best version of yourself and trying to just put out good content and put out good content that you believe is good content. And I think there'll be other people out there uh, that agree. So for me, it was, you know, yeah, people weren't really reading a bunch of my articles. They weren't reading, you know, a bunch of articles from our site at all, but it was like, if I'm doing the work, let's go ahead and tweet out some of the cool shit. And then, you know, from there, let's uh, let the cards fall um, as they may. So yeah, definitely, man, it's a uh, very easy to have doubt and that and anything, but I just, you know, and that's kind of where great day to be great uh, comes from a little bit where it's just like, Hey, ah, another day, you know, we all have this, whether you're in fantasy or whatever, you know, we all don't wake up every day, all cheery and just ready to go. Um, There's a good quote where it was like, discipline is doing your job even when you don't want to do it because we don't have motivation every day we have it sometimes and that's great and all but you know even very motivated people are going to have days where you don't want to do it so just trying to maintain that discipline and doing the things you need to do on a daily basis that you know in your core will help you be a better person help you uh, achieve your goals uh that's the key that's great great advice great wisdom there uh what's been the most rewarding part of your experience in the fantasy industry Oh, the money. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'd say it's just the daily, again, just being able to wake up and just talk football and just focus fully on that. And, you know, as I've been able to uh, kind of go on a bit more um, in the industry, I, I've just been able to shut out some of the things where like NFL news just really kind of put time constraints on my schedule with, Hey, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. So it wasn't, wasn't a big deal at the time, but just being able to more or less, man, work from home with my dogs, have my schedule. I can kind of work out when I want. And just, I'm a, I'm not the most organized person in the world. I get stuff done when it needs to get done, but uh, I have the sort of job and schedule that allows me uh, to do that. And for me, that uh, leads to less stress in my overall life, which is not kind of what we're trying to achieve at the end of the day, you know, just have that voice in your head, calm the hell down for once. So uh, I would just say, yeah, we're getting to the point where I'm happy with what I've achieved. I'm happy with what I get to wake up and do every day. And, you know, like, uh, I think first question I answer, man, I just love football and I still do. Uh, I've never gotten tired of it. There's always more fun things to look at every single year. We get an entire new season uh, of stuff to do. And uh, I really, truly don't get tired of that opportunity. I love it. Uh, is there a moment, uh, like a memorable moment or achievement that you've experienced uh, in this in this time, in the, on this journey that you can think of that like really stands out? Um, Some of the stuff coming up a little bit where, you know, you get the retweet from someone like Evan Silva. And it's like, Oh, I, you know, this is good. This is going well now. People like what I have to say. Cause again, you can, I know some of my best tweets I thought I sent over the years and they don't get like any interaction. And you're like, Oh damn, was this dumb? And you start to kind of realize like, you know, not trying to toot my heart, but now I, I could probably just tweet a player name and get more interaction than like some truly, really smart ADP driven thing I might've done like five years ago. So coming up, I would say, you know, getting that big retreat from someone was really nice. And that's something I try to, you know, remember and, you know, help uh, the up and comers do as well. There's a lot of great uh, new guys as well. Uh, Sam Sherman, I know at established to run, uh, he's done really great stuff. Uh, Chuck Bass cracks me up every single day with, you know, <laughs> some of the stuff he puts out there. So, uh, you know, they're not exactly a uh, small content creators. Either. They're, they're both doing their thing. So no disrespect at all there, but yeah, man, just, uh, getting that extra boost. It's been really cool to get some of the players, uh, you know, eventually not totally interacting with me, but, uh, you know, I've been president of the Cordero Patterson fan club, uh, over the years and always hyping him up. And he slid into the DMS like in 2022 and just like, Hey man, I appreciate all the support. So that, that was really cool, uh, to get from him. Um, the other day I made a Kyle juice check highlight film and he quote tweeted him. was like, man, this has got me amped up to start the season now. Like, let's I go. And, yeah. No, that's, that's like, all right. Oh yeah. You know, these guys, cause there's, again, there's a lot of, a lot of negativity that goes around and yeah, guess what? We are in the business of valuing these players. Again, 
against ADP. So we can't just be, you know, rosy colored glasses about everyone, only say good things. But at the end of the day, you know, they are playing football. All these guys have achieved their dream. All these guys are trying to make their own, you know, money and just provide for their families as well. So uh, being able to spread some positiveness and uh, get appreciated, you know, by the other peers and even the players themselves, uh, has been very cool. That's just great, great answer. I love the I love the Chuck Bass uh, shout out because yeah, that guy is that guy is funny. So he's, funny he's, man. he's so funny. Uh, and again, I mean, there's some incredible people in this fantasy space in this fantasy community. How much has has the fantasy community meant to you, and the friendships you've created over the years meant to you over the years? Oh, it's been sweet, man. Like, uh, you know, I've been going to the X, uh, Fantasy Football Expo in Canton the last three years, which is basically just, you know, a bunch of fantasy uh, content creators and some fans, too, that just kind of show up and Pro Football Hall of Fame, get some drafts in and yeah, man, now some of my closest friends, I mean, Dwayne McFarlane, Chris Allen, John Daigle, had all these guys at my wedding, a bunch of other guys, you know, Rich Rebar, I consider, you know, like an, an actual real life friend now and plenty more people like that. So uh, Drew Davenport, like I'm, I'm going over to Chris's uh, this weekend to play poker with him and a bunch of other guys. And, you know, if I had to, because, you know, it's one of these things where I think we all agree that like, kind of after college, you aren't exactly making all that many new friends all the time. At, le- at least I don't, like I kind of, you know, I go to the gym, I keep my headphones in, I kind of keep to myself uh, more situations than not. But, uh, you know, yeah, having this whole new uh, community of uh, friends uh, out there has been awesome, man. And even just some of the people on, uh, you know, Twitter, I'm not as good at getting to uh, DMs these days. It's just, you know, I try, man, but it, it can get overwhelming sometimes. And like actually trying to start a family and a wife, I, ha- I had to, uh, you know, draw the line somewhere where, you know, if you don't ever draw a line you can just kind of let this thing uh, consume uh, every waking moment of your life but you know again having some truly just good interactions with people helping some people win their fantasy leagues it's been really cool when um people win their fantasy league or maybe i give them uh, some good advice one guy uh one of my rare helicopter tweets hit and i think i helped yeah. some guy like win the millie and he was just saying how like he had used a lot of uh my research and you know he's like, oh what a uh, charity uh, could i give to you know in your name so i always name the uh ASAPA, the the sad dog commercial one. I always have to look it up, but how can you not, you know, feel bad for those uh, mutts going on there? So, yeah, man, it's seeing good people have a uh, good success, and uh, yeah, I love some of the friends I made along the way for sure. What uh, what's your favorite event at the expo? The playing poker with the boys till four a.m. and just getting wasted. I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, that is honestly, uh, there's a lot of good. Uh, you know, boosts and stuff on a uh, Sunday, but honestly, that's more just about a uh, hanging out. I'm going back. Uh, I was, I was the PFF Kings classic representative. That's where I got those handy dandy belts. And then um, Kings classic is a big, you know, fantasy competition in between uh, every company gets like one representative. And then um, we already had some of uh, fancy life, but they aren't able to go this year. So get my name back in it, trying to uh, take home the crown. That's a lot of fun. And the way we do it is there's a redraft and an auction part. And man, like I haven't been in live auction leagues before this. Those are so much fun, man. Cause it's just, you know, I was in, um, I was in the same one as JJ Zacharyson where I was helping out a bit uh, last year. And like, you know, you just get certain personalities in there and uh, you know, talking shit to people, just driving up the price for no good reason. Like they take a long time, but when you actually have, you know, the auctioneer there and you have a group of people that are focused on it, live auction drafts can be so much fun. So I'd say the, uh, the auction part uh, in particular, other than just hanging out with the guys, uh, that's been, that's been pretty great. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I, I got to, I ran the draft board for the, the main auction last year nice. at the expo. And uh, yeah. And if you've ever see, witnessed a live auction draft, I mean, it's a sight to be seen. It's, it's a lot of fun. All that trash talk. You got Brad Evans yelling across the room at Jeff Radcliffe. And yeah. like, it's just <laughs> such good stuff, right? Such good stuff. So definitely get to the expo if you've never been because it's it's a spectacular event, something that we we all love so much. I can't wait. Uh, can't wait till the one coming up next month. It's going to be great. Yeah, Obviously, it, it brings us all together, right? People across from across all, you know. Every corner of the country, uh, every background you can imagine comes together with that common love of, of football. You got the 2024 season coming up. Any uh, any players right now that you just you just you, you just can't wait to jump ADP for? 
Kyler Murray, I think, is mispriced. The fact he's going behind Stroud and Joe Burrow, I just don't get. I mean, the dude's been a QB1 his entire career, one of four quarterbacks ever, 20-plus fantasy points per game. His defense sucks. He just got Marvin Harrison Jr. Again, he came back from injury last year, still looked great, was still a QB1. Uh, everyone must have forgot that he just remains a baller. Let's see who else. Um, James Conner. I mean, this is keep hyping up the Cardinals, I guess. I can talk about Greg Dorch next. But James Conner, just every single year, man, I mean, I, I got it right here like 2021 rb 35 adp rb8 finish rb15 adp rb9 finish rb25 adp rb13 finish rb27 right now uh, at least you know some of this adp so i think he could uh you know really get going ezekiel elliott's someone where if you just honestly if you just like put an x through his name and it was just player he's the cowboys rb1 who cares that he averaged 3.8 yards per carry like it was 3.5 or whatever it doesn't really matter in fantasy football when you get the volume and you get the touchdown opportunities and that's what he's had he sucked his last year in dallas and he was still a top 24 running back because of those scoring opportunities now he doesn't even have pollard out there so again it's one of these situations where i think zeke's inefficiency Put it up next to Saquon Barkley. Put it up next to, you know, Alvin Kamara from literally last year, man. And you're going to see how close it is. Josh Jacobs was one of the worst running backs in football last year. And guess what? He's going third round in Green Bay. And that's fine. He should be. But again, Zeke and, you know, Joe Mixon, I think, are just two of these guys where their inefficiency seems to be held against them far more than others. Last one I'll give... uh, it's hurt me in the past many years, but I still believe in Antonio Gibson, man. Now he's going outside the top 150 picks. Patriots, three years, $11 million deal to be the RB2 behind Stevenson. And, you know, Zeke has 235 vacated touches out of the way. I think Gibson is the heavy favorite, obviously, to get those. And no, he's not going to take Ramondre Stevenson's job. But you look at the rest of that depth chart, and unless, you know, we got some Kevin Harris uh, truthers out there. And, you know, I think Jermichael Hasty is now with the Patriots. Like, Gibson is still someone with multiple seasons of double digit touchdowns and a thousand plus total yards to his name. He's got the theoretical receiving ability and three down size we look for. If Ramondre Stevenson misses time, I think we're going to be hard pressed to keep Gibson out of the position's top 15 players. And for that reason, one of the best late round running backs out there. There you go. And, and the, the key here is these are affordable people you can apply. You can get on any <laughs> fantasy roster if you want. And there's no, there's no hard, there's no big cost, right? They're there. Yeah. See, how, see how it turns out. Good, good, uh, good, good names right there. Let's uh, let's dive into some rapid fire questions. I'll just throw out some questions. Uh, you let me know what what first comes to mind. What do you enjoy most about what you're doing in the industry right now? Just podcasting a lot, talking ball with Dwayne specifically, but you know everyone else that uh, we get to as well. But yeah, just uh, you know, I, I've noticed if I don't get a chance to kind of write a little bit and talk just on a daily basis, I almost just feel like incomplete when the, when the day is supposed to be over, you know, it's a lot more fun to chill and fire up, uh, you know, the PS five after you've actually gotten some work done or gotten a workout in and all that. So I'd say, uh, yeah, just having that opportunity to, uh, do the podcast, do some writing every single day if I want to. I love it. What's, uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? I don't know. I can't think of a specific instance, but just, grind every single day i guess would be the thing and it's i think that i i mean like every day too i and not that you can't still have fun on the weekends but you know i think people that try to put the 15 hour days in man like you just you're wasting a lot of those hours because you just i don't think we're designed to necessarily do that maybe you got some peds that help you guys you know keep on going a little bit longer you know touche there but uh you know i do think uh just really if, if you can just make the most out of four to five hours a day man i think the things you can accomplish uh, will probably even surprise yourself so just trying to again stack uh one good day after another uh helps go a long way yeah that's some good advice people can take for sure now if you could uh, have dinner with any three people dead or alive who would they be Ooh. I'll go Woody Hayes, Jim Tressel. I'm not going to say Urban, but that would be funny. Um, <laughs> Woody Hayes, Jim Tressel, and give me uh, – we'll go Troy Smith, too. He's one of my uh, favorite Buckeyes growing up. I love it. That's good. Uh, what are your favorite hobbies and activities outside of fantasy sports? 
Love, uh, you know, Saturday nights, good chance I'm watching whatever a uh, UFC card is on there. Love that. Been trying to watch my Guardians more and more. First place uh, in the AL Central. Got to love that. Maybe one day we'll snap this damn world a series streak. Uh, been really working out like five days a week pretty much this whole year. So I'm getting, I'm cheating it a little bit though, man. I figured out, I think the key, at least my key, because I've always hated running and I'm into weightlifting, but it's tough to do like five days a week because uh, you're just so fucking sore all the time. But the one thing I figured out uh, is if I incline walk at three three speed, I'm up to like 17 incline. I can do that like forever. I do that for 60 minutes and it burns, man, like 750 calories where I, I've done the Stairmaster, I've done cycling, I've done running. And to me, like just the incline walk seems to burn the calories at a rate where I'm not hating my entire life. I can draft. I can listen to podcasts during the time. So I'm buying a treadmill from my garage here soon. That has really like changed my entire um, workout approach. Cause before I would just, you know, I could get in there and do legs, do upper body, and then maybe get something else going for day three of the week. But I was always hard pressed to try to find the motivation to get in and get a workout in the rest of the time. And walking up that incline, man, it was that uh, my wife uh, told me about initially that TikTok like, Three fifteen thirty challenge or wherever. I think it's three twelve thirty challenge, and that's what it originally was with three being the speed, twelve incline, thirty minutes. So I've obviously upped those numbers a bit, but yeah, man, a um, lot to be said with that, and uh, I enjoy it. I love it. What? Uh, how about an all time favorite show, TV show? Oh, Sopranos, easily. Yeah, I just started. Actually, it's funny. I just started. I had I never watched it. I'm on like season one, episode three, and it's 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 pretty good. I, I can tell it's gonna be a great one. <laughs> the goat, seriously. How about an all time favorite movie? Goodfellas, also also easy, okay. man. You know, I don't care if they're the trendy one. They're, they're the they're the trendy goats for a reason, man. You know, it's uh, uh it's that way for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> How about an all time favorite sports movie? definitely not remember the Titans. I think that is so, I, I almost hate remember the Titans <laughs> enough to like do it. I just think, uh, now I'm being a bit of a dickhead. Um, I'd say, I'd say Friday night lights. I still get goosebumps when they're, you know, walking out the tunnel for the last game of the year. And, uh, it was a great book as well. But, um, yeah, I remember being a kid and, you know, customizing the NCAA football rosters to get Mike Wentrell and Dom Billingsley on the squad and everything. So, a uh, good TV show, too. Also, TV show is more fun to make fun of. Uh, you know, shout out uh, Tim Riggins quit, quits drinking for a week and spooks Smash Williams into, like, taking steroids and, get, like, loses his job. Like, so, uh, Landry kills a guy in season two and they, like, never talk about it again. So, really funny TV show. Great movie. I love it. How about an all-time favorite band or artist or musician? Ooh, I might got to give it to Jimi Hendrix. I used to have his, uh, back in my old office setup, I always had the Jimi tapestry in the background, but the goat guitarist, uh, in my opinion. But yeah, I, mean, I grew up all on just the, you know, 70s classic uh, rock. So Jimi, Zeppelin, you know, Pink Floyd, all the greats. Definitely loving that. Uh, newer... I've been listening to Portugal the Man a ton. Their latest album, uh, Chris Black, Ch or Chris Black Save My Life or Changed My Life. One of the best albums I've heard recently. Uh, Portugal the Man, Cage the Elephant, two of my favorite recent ones as well. So any of that, you know, like to have a guitar in there, uh, but some of the alternative rock uh, these days is pretty, pretty fire. Love it. Jimi Hendrix, Seattle guy. So I can appreciate hey, that. Hey, there we go. Uh, you uh, you recently went to Thailand for your honeymoon, right? Let's uh, let's eliminate bias, though. What What's the best vacation you've ever been on besides that? besides thailand um i would say i had a really good trip to arizona with uh my wife right before covid where we got to go to um oh what's a freaking we, we spent a little bit of time in phoenix and uh scottsdale but then we went to uh the grand canyon was fine i think it's overrated i'll be honest grand canyon and uh the niagara falls i think are overrated you see it it's cool for a half hour and then it's like all right let's kind of move on if you get to walk through the grand canyon fine but sedona uh, has sedona. turned into, yeah that's one of my favorite places you yeah. know on the planet that i've been to so yeah just getting to again hike through there and just was really good vibes uh really enjoyed uh, the arizona trip we also went in um I think it was like January or February. So when I had a very good time, if I, if I went there right now and had to deal with the 110 degrees every day, maybe not top on the list, but uh, that was a great trip. Then how was that Thailand experience? Dude, it was, it was fun. Uh, completely different culture. My God. I mean, just the mopeds that are just sipping around at all freaking hours and they just cover the streets. So um, got to go see some uh, Thai fights, which was really freaking cool over in Phuket. But 
culture shock, man. And they just legalized weed there uh, a couple of years ago and it is just everywhere. So kind of <laughs> hilarious. Cause like, it's just like, I didn't even realize that first, man, there's like literally walking Friday night, you know, walking around, there's just prostitutes hanging out outside the bars, like trying to grab your arm and stuff. And I didn't even realize like, that's what they were at first. I mean, they're, it is a lawless place, but then hilarious. Like in Bangkok, they don't sell alcohol between two and 5 PM every single day. Like that's like their solution to trying to get this place back together. So yeah, man, you can do a, a hell of a lot of things there. So it was, it was very cool. I will say, um, you know, don't, don't have the biggest desire to go back, uh, anytime soon. If I'm trying to get my, uh, beach on, I think I'll probably just, uh, stay a little bit more in uh, North America, but makes I, sense. yeah, definitely got to uh, grind through some movies, man. It was like 30 freaking hours of, uh, flying there and back you know between the layovers and all that so won't miss that part but no uh, very fun time how about a, how about a bucket list travel spot we're talking um where are we saying we want to go next i'd like to go to i took some portuguese in college so brazil has always been a place i've been interested in going to but you know like it to be a little bit less dangerous uh, before we get going there so just uh I'll say Australia, but I want to hop around Europe too. I, I wouldn't say anywhere in particular, but uh, we'll, we'll go Australia for fun. Sounds good. How about a, a go-to snack or drink while watching watching football? Dude, oh, football specifically. I mean, beer and wings. I mean, how could it be uh, anything else? Give me my Kona big wave. And uh, wings and rings have been a good delivery spot. I still, you know, I love my uh, Buffalo Wild Wings too. Shout out a uh, Fantasy Life sponsor. Roosters in the Midwest is freaking great. They're probably the goats. But uh, yeah, man. And then uh, just in general, I before the show actually, pretzels and cottage cheese, man. Oh, it's <laughs> such a great combo. I've been eating that combo since I was like four or five years old. I know people think cottage cheese is gross. Maybe it's just because I grew up on it, but man, give me uh, pretzels with a good dip, man, and I will go through a whole bag. A yeah, good source of protein there too. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, what are some of your personal and professional goals for the next few years? Um, I want to I wanna try to put my hat in the ring of, you know, being almost that daily, uh, host type of role. I wanted to get it off the ground back in March. I think we're going to now get it off the ground next week. So better late than never uh, with that. But yeah, man, just, uh, again, with my, I, know, I think I'm a smart guy and everything. I'm not putting myself down, but I think what I can do to help separate myself from others in the industry is just really providing a high level of content every single day. And uh, I think other people sometimes, you know, it needs to be, maybe they can reach a higher peak than me, but um, I think my ability to do it, you know, almost more consistently, if you can't match, you know, someone's, quality well maybe you can eventually surpass them you know if you have quantity that does still have a solid amount of a uh, quality you know um certain guy can write one article that gets a hundred thousand views i can't get that but if i write three that are getting thirty five thousand each you know all of a sudden uh we're getting the same uh, number so a bit more work but yeah man just seeing uh you know the pat mcafee's of the world and seeing the way some things are going uh I don't know if I want the uh, 6 a.m. having to go move to Bristol sort of job or anything like that every single day. But, uh, you know, from the comforts of uh, my home office, really looking forward to uh, getting more of a Monday through Friday consistent show where uh, I can build some stability, man, because as much as I've uh, – Every job I've changed to, you know, has been for good reasons. And uh, I believe I've moved up, you know, each and every time. Uh, I would really like to give myself a chance to, you know, take three, four years and build something that, uh, again, is sustainable and is really enjoyable and just able to, uh, you know, have a more of a consistent uh, fan base going on there. So really looking forward to that. And it's obviously it's a lot easier to grind when you're passionate about what you're doing. You clearly have a, a huge passion for football and, and love what you're doing. So that's uh, that makes every day a great day to be great. For hey, sure. there it is. <laughs> what uh, uh, can, can you name? Um, you know, any more any others that have just had a huge impact on you during your run in, in this industry? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll say uh, the Roto World group I was with really helped uh, push me and just really good guys as well. And, you know, seeing, uh, you know, Hayden Winks, Josh Norris, uh, Pat Daughtery, John Daigle, you know, we, we were all in there at the same time. And, you know, 
we are, you know, working for the same company, but it's one of those weird things where you're kind of competing against each other. You're kind of not, you know, we all kind of want to be number one, but there's ways to do that while still supporting each other. And, uh, you know, I think those guys all are really good examples of guys that take their jobs very seriously. They do a great job with it, but they also, you know, they take their jobs seriously without being uh, too serious about football uh, itself. Cause again, uh, I do. And, you know, I, I have this mistake too, sometimes where we just, we get so caught up in the weeds of it that we almost forget that we're talking about, you know, a fake game attached to freaking football with a ball that isn't even round, you know, as a uh, Norm McDonald used to say. So I just, uh, again, it's not taking yourself too seriously, but taking your job seriously. I uh, really appreciate those guys helping, helping show that. I love it. Do you have any uh, more advice for people that want to get more involved in fantasy, uh, get more involved, involved creating content? And is there anything else that we haven't covered that you want to share before we close things out? Yeah, I just say go, um, do it, you know? So I, I get, and I'm, I always try to respond back and everything, you know, DMs, like, how can I get going in the industry? How can I do this and that? Like, just got to create, you just got to do it, man. Cause otherwise you're going to just kind of keep thinking uh, in your mind, like, oh, I'll, I'll set this up. Well, I'll do this when it's perfect. I'll, oh, I'll start next week when this, you know, when this thing's done. And I know it's, we all have real life shit goes on, you know, we, yeah, we, you got to delay stuff sometimes, but, um, there's actually a guy I, I like sometimes he's, <laughs> he's kind of a clown sometimes, but he grinds every single day, man. If you guys are in the UFC streets, MMA guru, kind of a controversial guy there, but he he says a similar thing. And you look at, even if you don't like the guy, man, you got to respect that. He literally streams every single day, a lot of times, multiple times. And he was just saying a similar thing where man, like people, I think they just almost waste so much time thinking like, how can I get started when you could, have already started uh tim welch who is a uh incredible mma coach he's sean o'malley's head coach uh he's talked about that too where people are like how can i get going and you know i want to become a fighter and stuff and you just gotta start and then guess what if you do that and you keep going 10 years down the line uh you know look how far you can be so you know rome wasn't building a day and all that and uh at the end of the day man just keep stacking up good days and hopefully after a probably long period of time man uh hopefully things swing in your favor that's awesome. Now, can you tell listeners and viewers uh, where to find you? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Fantasy Life. Catch me on all things there. The Fantasy Life Show is our uh, lovely podcast at iHeart. It's on Twitter. Yeah, man, got the uh, Hunter S. Thompson, uh, you know, avatar still rolling strong. I just, I don't know, man. I picked it. I've had people ask me, like, why don't you have, like, your real face there? And I... You know, I tweet out plenty of podcasts and shit. Like, I'm not hiding the face or anything like that. Uh, I've always just say, you know, if it ain't broke, uh, don't fix it. And Hunter S. Thompson is someone I just read. Uh, I read Hell's Angels over my uh, honeymoon, and that was just a fantastic read. So uh, Hunter's ability, you know, RIP, just to, uh, again, really make you feel like you're there. I have been um, – haven't quite tried my hand at the uh, gonzo journalism or anything yet, but uh, that would be a goal of mine in the future. So we'll see what happens. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you so much for joining me, my man. Uh, it was such a pleasure to have you on here. Wish you all the best in 2024. I can't wait to see you in Canton. Thank you, brother. Gonna be fun. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Football Unlimited Podcast. Until next time, be sure to follow and subscribe to all of FFU's social media accounts for daily content. 